If you are a custom car audio fan, odds are you've heard of these guys right here, JL Audio. JL Audio has long been known as a manufacturer of quality and innovative car audio gear. From the legendary W7 subwoofer with its unique overroll surround to their lineup of specialized and hidden stealth box subwoofer enclosures, this is a company that in my opinion makes, dare I say it, iconic car audio gear. After all, they are one of the few companies that I can ask one of my non-car audio friends, hey, have you ever heard of JL Audio? And the answer is usually, yeah, I had some of their subwoofers back in the day, or one of my friends had a bunch of their amps. With a reputation like this, we know that when JL Audio decided to add a new flagship series of speakers to their lineup, they had big shoes to fill. That new flagship speaker line is these guys right here, the C7 component line. Ever since these have been released, I've been wanting to get my hands on some. What do they look like up close? What comes with them? What are the design characteristics and features? And what applications are these high-end speakers for? Well, JL Audio was cool enough to partner with us on this video so we can answer these questions and so I can use these speakers in my dad's daily driver sound quality build that I'm currently working on. Let's dive on in and take a look at the C7 components in this product overview video. So let's kick things off with talking about the basic specs of each of these three different speakers. The tweeter here is a one inch tweeter or a 25 millimeter tweeter for you metric folks. And this comes in at 100 watts RMS and 200 watts peak. The mid range is a three and a half inch speaker, which is 90 millimeters. And this is also 100 watts RMS, 200 watts peak. Finally, the woofer measures at six and a half inches, which is 165 millimeters, and this is rated at 125 watts RMS, or 225 watts peak. Each of these speakers has a four ohm nominal impedance. Now right off the bat, one of the things I really like that JL has done here is with each of those different power ratings on the speakers, it might be hard to find an exact amplifier that matches that power rating. And JL knows this, so they give us a recommended range for power rating on each of the speakers. So for the tweeter, for example, they recommend 50 to 150 watts RMS per channel. And the reason that it has a rating over what they're saying the continuous power rating is, is because they know with music, if you have an 150 watt RMS amplifier, you're not gonna be pumping 100 watts continuously to the speaker. This continuous power rating is more of a rating for if you were listening to something like a sine wave, not like music where we have a lot of dynamic range. This is the case for each of the different speakers. We can see that the mid-range, they recommend 50 to 150 watts RMS. And then for the six and a half, they recommend 50 to 175 watts RMS per channel. When JL Audio went to the drawing board to design these speakers, their design goals were smooth off-axis response, dynamic stability, and low distortion. Keep in mind those three design goals. I'll touch more on how these speakers accomplish those goals later in the video. Before I start opening these boxes, something I want to stress here is how JL Audio designed these specifically for car audio. What I really like here is each speaker, as you can see, is purchased individually. This is super important. In a lot of cars, you might not be doing an active three-way setup. You might only have room for a six and a half in the door and then room for a tweeter. And these speakers are designed so that you don't necessarily need the three and a half inch mid-range. Of course, adding the three and a half mid-range is optimal, but if you need to, you can just run these two speakers and change your crossovers. If we are doing some custom fabrication, like we are in my dad's daily driver sound quality build where we're making custom A-pillars, and I'm doing that custom fabrication so that I can mount both the three and a half inch mid-range and the tweeter. The other thing that's nice about these speakers being individually sold is if we wanted to have a center channel, which was maybe a three and a half inch speaker, we could use just the one speaker. We don't have to buy a full kit and not use the tweeter or the woofer. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice when I open each of these boxes is there's no passive crossovers. Just in case you don't know what that is, a passive crossover is that box that connects between the amplifier and the speakers that a lot of times you'll get with a component set. And what it does is it limits the bandwidth of frequencies going to each of these speakers. JL Audio knows when you're doing a high quality system like this, you're going to be using a digital signal processor to control the signal that's sent to each of these speakers anyway. So these speakers are intentionally designed for use with active crossovers. Let's start opening boxes. We'll start here with our smallest box for the tweeter. So the packaging here, nothing super flashy, but it doesn't need to be because the focus here is the actual quality of the product. Let's open this little tab. Check out this tweeter. 
So on top here, let's see, it looks like we have our warranty registration card along with our serial number. And this is something super cool that I'm gonna show you guys a little bit later. We can actually go online to register this product. And when we punch in the serial number, we're going to get the actual measured frequency response of this exact speaker. On this card here, there's a thank you for choosing the JL Audio C7 speakers. There's a note here that these are exclusively designed for use in active crossover systems, like I mentioned earlier, and they recommend the use of a high quality DSP and a dedicated amplifier channel. Also an important note here, the capacitor included with this tweeter is for additional protection and not intended for use as the only high pass filter in the system. So there should be a capacitor in here somewhere that we will find, and what this is noting is a capacitor can be used as a high pass crossover, but it's not intended to be used as a crossover. It's intended to be used as protection for this tweeter. I'm sure whatever capacitor value they picked, it's probably below what you would set your normal crossover to for these things, but it's just intended to prevent any base from possibly going to this if your DSP software messes up and potentially damaging the tweeter. So we can remove this little protective cover here. You can remove this C7 note. Oh, there's our capacitor right there. It looks like we have a bag of some goodies. Got the tweeter itself. Let's take a look at these housings. So this first housing here is something that you would use probably more if you were doing a custom set of A-pillars or if you were fabricating your own rings or if you were just making a hole in a panel, you could push this through. What you would do is you would use this along with the included screw and you could see that that would allow you to attach this from behind the panel. I can tell by feeling this, this is some sort of metal. I'm going to guess it's an aluminum. It has a nice shiny look around the ring there. Looks like inside here, it's a piece of foam to probably kind of isolate the tweeter as you push it down. And it looks like it has a tab here to lock it in place. You know what, we gotta test that out real quick. I'm gonna pop the tweeter out before we talk about it. So yeah, the wires come through each of those grooves and then we push the tweeter down into place and turn it, I'd say about 10 to 15 degrees, and now it is locked in position. So that's one housing. This other housing they give us here, this is a surface mount type housing. If you were just going to put it on top of a surface in the vehicle and not actually drill a large hole for it to sit down inside of, again, very clearly metal. And we have this nice shiny reveal around the outside. In the little package of goodies here, there's a machine type screw, which is for use with this. There's also more of a wood type screw. They also give us one of these small threaded clips that is a little bit more low profile that you could put the screw through in order to attach the bracket. And then they give us a couple of terminal connectors. Here's a closer look at the protection capacitor. Again, this is not meant to be used as a crossover. This is to protect the tweeter in the event that your crossover settings somehow get messed up on your DSP and you send low frequencies to the tweeter. This protects it and prevents that tweeter from potentially being damaged. That's everything in the box. Let's take a look at the important part here, the tweeter. So taking a close look at the tweeter in these type of videos is always a little bit more difficult because, well, the tweeter is completely enclosed, but we're gonna do our best anyway. First off, the tweeter has a dome diaphragm, which is a corundum ceramic coated aluminum alloy. What this means is the diaphragm is extremely stiff, yet very light. Stiffness is important in speaker design because you don't want the diaphragm to potentially distort as it's moving very quickly. The lower mass of the diaphragm is advantageous because it allows this to operate as a true piston at higher frequencies without that penalty of the moving mass. The suspension is actually a special treated silk. It's an S-roll style surround, ferrofluid in the magnetic gap. The motor design is a neodymium magnet, an underhung voice coil, and JL Audio uses FEA tools, which stands for finite element analysis, which basically means they go all out on their research and development of really developing some of the best speakers in the world. Visually, this tweeter has this really unique grill type look with these different hole sizes. Make note of that because we're gonna see that later on the other speakers. On the side of the tweeter, we can see that locking tab that locks into the housing, and then the wire is nice and large, more than substantial for a tweeter. First impressions here on the tweeter, I love that these housings aren't dinky plastic, they're metal, they're solid. I feel like it's a great attachment solution to use this with this. It gives you a lot of flexibility for mounting in panels of different thicknesses based on the length of that screw. I also like that the connectors are different sizes for positive and negative. That way we can't potentially connect these in the wrong polarity. And I love, love, love that they include a protective 
capacitor here. This is something I've touched on in one of my previous videos. This is very important when you have a system that is an active system. So let's move on from the tweeter and take a look at our mid-range. So they've got the same pretty simple packaging design. Open it up. Once again, we have our warranty card on top. Here's a box here on top and inside of here, they've actually provided two different speaker grills. This is super cool. So if you're going maybe with more of a stealth kind of normal OEM look, this is really nice, this matches well. Whereas if you want more of a flashy look, look at all those different size circles. I love this grill, that looks super cool. Now when I see these two grills, the thought that I immediately have is does it match the tweeter? Because the tweeter obviously only has the one grill because it's permanently attached. As we can see here, they thought of this because the center of the grill here on the tweeter matches this grill, whereas the outside of the tweeter matches this grill. This is super cool. Which grill is your guys' favorite? The one with all the holes here or the one that is more kind of stealthy looking? Looks like they have another protective layer there. We'll take that out and this gives us access. Oh, okay, so it's a separate speaker mounting ring, which makes sense. This ring is designed to actually have the grill mount inside of it. Let's do a quick test of the fitment. Perfect, presses in there nice. It has a nice kind of positive feel. I don't feel like it's gonna fall out at all, which it's not. And then let's see how hard it is to get out. This is important too, because you would have to use a little pick tool to actually remove this to access the mounting hardware for the speaker. Let's actually test that out with a real pick tool here. So we would just go inside one of the circles. Perfect, comes out nice and easy. Much like the tweeter, this piece is obviously made out of metal, not cheap at all, no expense spared, and it has that nice, reflective ring around the outside, which is going to match the tweeter perfectly. We'll take a look at the speaker last. I wanna lift it up and we see a little note here that says hardware under tray. Pull this out. The little hardware bag is stapled to the side here. Inside they give us four different fasteners for the four holes on the speaker along with different size terminals, which is again nice for a positive and a negative. You will notice these screws are more of a wood screw type. Design wise, JL Audio used a vacuum formed mineral filled polypropylene material for the cone and dust cap. Again, that gives them low mass and excellent damping of the cone. A lot of design and testing went into the concave dust cap design, which further improves high frequency performance. The suspension is a positive roll rubber surround and a linear profile spider that is formed from a Nomex and poly cotton blend. You can see that the voice coil and former is actually pretty large. It's 1.42 inch diameter, which is 36 millimeters. Holes in the side that allow for cooling. It's got woven leads in the spider. Again, a neodymium magnet optimized with JL Audio's FEA tools. A very nice and strong cast alloy basket and then terminals on each side of the speaker. Appearance wise, this nice shiny metal around the outside perimeter, but that is covered up when we put the speaker ring over the top. This is kind of nice though, because if you aren't using this ring along with the grill, at least you still have this nice look. On the back side, you guys already saw this, JL Audio along with the C7-350. And it has this protective piece on here too. We'll take that off. You may have noticed this note on the back of the speaker, both the mid-range and woofer are built in the USA at JL Audio's Miramar, Florida location. So first impressions on the mid-range here, I love that this has a cast basket. The finish is really nice. I don't feel any metal burrs. It looks to be a very nice speaker. Love that it has those woven leads. Looks like plenty of cooling design. The magnet itself has a very nice finished look. This nice round machining on the side here. I love, love, love that they give us two different options for grills, being a fabricator. It's nice to even have an extra grill that you can maybe use on a different project in the future, but to have two grills to choose from based on the style of design that you're doing for your build, super nice. And I really like that this ring is again, made out of metal, good and strong, no expenses spared. Now let's take a look at this guy here, the biggest and baddest of the three brothers. This is the six and a half inch woofer. Once again, same simplistic packaging design, warranty card on top, same notes as the other speakers. We've got a box here on top for the grills. I'm gonna be super disappointed if there's not two different versions of the grill. Let's see here. 
Oh, it looks like we got two, all right. Much like the mid-range, we have this super awesome concentric circle design, and then more of your normal stealth install. Basically the same packaging design as the three and a half. Looks like we have our mounting ring here. Again, this has a nice beefy feel to it. It's metal. It's got the JL Audio logo there with the reflective banding. Here's our speaker. We'll set this aside. Hardware under tray. Essentially the same thing as the mid-range, except this time there are eight fasteners since there are eight holes. The two different size terminals. And I will note that these screws are slightly larger, which makes sense as this is a slightly larger speaker. As far as design notes go, this is a mineral-filled polypropylene material that is vacuum-formed for the cone. A curvilinear profile on the cone. And then the dust cap, if we look closely at it, it definitely has a unique shape transitioning from this center part to the actual cone itself. According to JL Audio in their testing, this shape and design here helps to improve the higher frequency behavior. The spider that is part of the suspension is once again a Nomex and polycotton blend. The lead is integrated into the spider, which is nice for high excursion on those bass notes. We don't have to worry about the lead slapping against the backside of the cone. Excursion is listed as five millimeters in one direction, rubber surround, and then a Y35 strontium ferrite magnet. Again, the motor assembly is FEA optimized to provide linear motor force throughout the performance range for this speaker. So we should get a nice linear response. And I have a feeling with the excursion and high power handling on this speaker, we're definitely gonna get some great mid-bass performance. Visually, that same shiny machining around the outside. So if you were not using the grill and the grill ring, still a nice, really classy look. On the back side is the JL Audio branding. Oh, that's so satisfying. Nice separation with the speaker terminals, one being on each side. I forgot to mention this on the mid-range speaker, but it is advantageous to have a terminal on each side like this because it makes it so that the spider is completely balanced from side to side, rather than having more weight on one side with the two leads together. 1.27 inch, AKA 32 millimeter diameter overhung voice coil inside there. And then finally, a purpose engineered cast alloy basket. The finish on this is really nice and smooth. I don't feel any burrs at all. Overall impressions on the six and a half, again, I love that they include the two different grill styles here. If you were doing an all out custom install where you were gonna show these off in the doors and not have them hidden, this would look really cool. And I do wanna note that if you are planning on mounting these in the door of a vehicle, definitely take note of the depth of this speaker. It comes in at 2.77 inches, which is 70 millimeters. You're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that your door has enough mounting room for that. If you are mounting in the door, most doors can handle it, but definitely something that you wanna check. And if you need to, you can always fabricate a nice, really thick set of adapters like I have here. Now that we've taken a look at the tweeter, the mid-range, and the woofer, I wanna take our warranty cards here and I wanna check online and take a look at the exact frequency response of each of these speakers. So I've pulled up the website that was on that product information card and that gives us our product registration for the C7 speakers. And once we fill this out, we're going to get an email with the PDF of our acoustical test report. The PDF will come through and give you information for all of the speakers that you registered. So in this case, I've registered my two tweeters, I've registered the two mid-ranges, and then the two woofers. And you can see that it shows your exact serial number with each of those speakers. On each of these test reports, we have the specifications of the speaker, we have the TS parameters, and then we have the dimensions. And this is obviously the same for all the speakers of this particular model number, but what is individualized is this acoustic test report down in the corner. I find that it's actually pretty rare for manufacturers to even provide a single version of this for all of their speakers across the board, so the fact that JL Audio is providing it for every single individual speaker is really, really cool. It's valuable to have this graph because we can understand what the performance of the speaker is going to look like within the parameters that we're going to use it. So for instance, this is the six and a half inch speaker, and I plan on using this to cross over between the sub, and then I'll probably play it up to about 400 hertz, which this is 100 hertz here, 200, 300, 400, and we can see that all of these lines converge, which means even our off-axis response, if that speaker isn't pointing directly at us, is still going to be nice and linear. And this is critical because this speaker is going to be down in the door. So I know that it's gonna play up to 400 hertz for me, no problem being nice and linear. 
So by having this information, we can do that mini analysis on each of our different speakers. As an example, again, if I'm handing off at about 400 hertz to the three and a half inch mid range, and let's say I play up to about 3,500, which would be, let's see, 2,000, 3,000, 3,500, you can see that we're still very linear even with our off axis response. This is going to be critical for mounting these in the A pillars. So what are these speakers ideal for? Well, several times in this video, I've brought up that these have great off axis performance. And why that's important is a lot of times when we're installing these in a custom location in a vehicle, like in this A pillar, or even in the door, we can't easily have these speakers aiming directly at us. If we do that in the A pillar, it's gonna mean the A pillar is gonna be big and obnoxious. It's gonna potentially block out view of the window. It's just gonna kind of look not factory. With these having the great off axis performance that they do, I can have them face more like this, so they're not aimed directly at our listening position. The other reason this is important is in the door location and up here, wherever we're installing these speakers, in a vehicle there's tons of hard surfaces like the windows where we're going to get all sorts of reflections. In my opinion, the better off-axis performance we have out of a speaker, the easier it is to tune and the easier it is to get this to sound amazing. So speaking of getting these speakers installed, like I mentioned earlier in the video, these are what I'm gonna be using in my dad's sound quality daily driver build. So in the next videos, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made that custom set of A pillars for the tweeter and the mid-range speakers, and I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made that thick adapter for the woofers down in the doors. Once the C7s are fully installed, we'll get to hear how they sound in a full three-way configuration. Design and specification-wise, these are looking very promising. So to learn more about the C7 lineup, you guys can check out the link down in the video description, or you can visit a JL Audio dealer near you. Once those new videos are released, you'll be able to find them here on screen. A special thanks to JL Audio for partnering with us on this project, and a special thanks to you for tuning in and watching this video. Don't forget to design build and install. Thanks guys.